Parker Maynard is the supervisor of Grow Urban Farm in Youngstown. I had the privilege of talking with him today about the rewarding and advertising work he and his group are doing to provide opportunity, empowerment, and freshly grown produce to the community. His passion comes through loud and clear as he describes their work and his desire to help people through training and nutrition. So without further delay, let's start this show. This is Scott Fain with the Life, Youngstown Lifestyle Podcast, and my guest today is Parker Maynard, the uh, Grow Urban Supervisor, Grow Over, excuse me, Grow Urban Farm Supervisor. How are you doing today, Parker? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, I, I appreciate you uh, coming on. We had a little bit of a, a back and forth uh, before we got on the call. I'm, I'm very happy to be talking with you because uh, I know you're busy and you got a lot of things going on. The last time we spoke, you were uh, promoting the orientation uh, that you guys were doing in, at the beginning of March and uh, in, in February. Can you tell us a little bit about how the orientation, uh, what happened and, you know, how it went? Sure. Yeah. So uh, the last we spoke, we were we were getting set for an orientation out in Trumbull County in Warren, Ohio. Um, that is the next phase of Flying High's expansion. Is is uh, you know we're we're funded to service the um, Mahoning, Columbia, and Trumbull County. So uh, as we expand our services, where Trumbull County is the next spot. And so we've been working with Ohio Means Jobs. Um, they've got a, a classroom there with computers available um, where we've been inviting folks to come in and basically hear all about our program. Um, and so it went great. We had a packed house, um, and I think we ended up signing up uh, probably eight individuals for our welding school. We got some CDCA uh, candidates, chemical dependency counselor assistants, and uh, also some SDNA, State Tested Nurses Assistant Program um, individuals you know, signed up for that. So it starts with uh, I, I think we explained it in the last you know podcast last time we spoke, but um, we got people uh, in some breakout groups and they got to ask some specific questions about the different vocational tracks we have. And yeah, a lot of great energy there. Um, and just as a as a reminder, because this may be the first time someone's hearing from you. Uh, Give, the, give us a nutshell as to what Flying High is about. Uh, I, I really love the message you guys are doing. Like, tell us really quickly what what it's about, and then we can get to our talk today. Sure, uh, it's workforce development. It's all about helping people uh, discover their their potential and earning power uh, through our vocational training program. So we've got individuals that are coming from a lot of different diversity of backgrounds. We have people who are just um, maybe unsatisfied with their job. They want options. Uh, we have people that are coming out of the criminal justice system, um, people who are walking out their recovery process, and uh, flying high provide the starting point for anybody in any position in their life. They're, we don't turn anybody away. If you come in and you're not able to provide a clean drug screen, we're going to get you working with our AOD, alcohol and other drug counselors, and our NAT program, NAT Nutritional Assisted Treatment Program. So we'll get you some supplements. We'll get you some uh, you know, education on, on foods that can get the body and the mind back to its vital state. Um, so then we can transition you into um, vocational training. You know, we have a welding school, 16 weeks. You've got your certs, and we've got you um, an interview with one of our 30 employers. Same thing with welding school, uh, a little bit longer period of time. Uh, and then we have our state-tested nurses assistant program. So there's a healthcare track, and that includes the CDCA chemical dependency counselor's assistant. For those of you, uh, there are a lot of individuals I'm finding that um, have either uh, witnessed or helped a, a family member or friend through their recovery or their own personal recovery, and they want to pass on the um, the skills and the knowledge um, and their own awakening to another person, and they want to provide peer support, which is actually a, another uh, vocational track we have. Uh, we've just added is a peer support specialty. So um, oh, we're nice. offering in yeah yeah absolutely, and so we've we've we're at, we've off, we're offering opportunities to build your experience in the professional environment here in our office. Uh, we have a, we just had an, an internship program. So we graduated, um, I want to say 14 or 15 CDCA students in our first CDCA class. And um, of those, there, there were like five or six that uh, hadn't yet attained um, uh, employment since they, they graduated. And so we've created an internship program for folks to build their resume through our organization, work with some of our clients, and we're mm -hmm. stewarding them.
them toward you know a higher level of employability and then connecting them with some of our employers in that process so um you know we stay with you until until you're ready to fly well i appreciate the all the stuff you guys are doing it's just a uh, you describe it on paper it just sounds really really wonderful and uh, i can tell from just talking with you that you have a lot of passion and energy toward the work that you're doing um now my first question to you uh when i first heard that you worked with the grow urban farm that's the question i had is like what is an urban farm because it puts me in mind of when we were uh, working out of detroit you hear a lot of the uh there's a lot of people who are like reclaiming some abandoned neighborhoods and uh, tearing down houses and instead turning some of that stuff into farmland, into gardens for the community. Is it something like that or like what is the Grow Urban Farm if you had to describe it to someone? So, uh, it, I, I've, I've been involved with farming in, in a traditional sense. You know, you're, you're, uh, kind of country farming, I guess. You want some ground, you put the plow down and, and open it up and do some tilling and, and larger larger crops, larger expanses of area. So it was it was um, when I did some of the studying to, to develop a curriculum to teach urban farmer training course. It was it was really great for me to realize that farming really started in cities. The first farming was urban farming. When people started to gather together, you know, they, they started to sow their crops in and amongst their towns and their homes and their, their businesses. And so the beginning of civilization, the farming is, is urban farming. It's where the people are. It's not till later advancements in fuel and, and, and uh, machinery, you know, tractors and combustion engine, that farming starts to move out into rural areas and large, large expanses of land. So it's really an urban farm brings farming back to its 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 core, its roots, which is um, people living in and amongst the agricultural systems that sustain life. Mm-hmm. And that awareness, that connection, is powerful and profound in um, kind of empowering people um, to kind of be the change and, and create the change that they want to in their community. So. Um, if, if you ever, if anybody brings up any ill of the world, from my perspective, it can all be solved with urban farming. <laughs> it makes yeah. sense, uh, what you're describing. It, it, yeah, if you have a city and you're, you're building a small town, why would you put your farm way out? You know, your farm would be right there on your property. So that makes a lot of sense when you say yeah. it. It's just not something yeah. you think about, you know. We're so used to living in the city where all the greenery is off to the side. Um yes. So now, if I'm someone who's interested in, in uh, joining you with Grow, Over, Grow Urban Farm, what kinds of activities specific to that are you, would you be doing? Like what types of uh, programs and activities would you be participating in? Sure. So, um, you know, Flying High, it encompasses, uh, I would say, four different branches. I just want to break down, you know, mentally for you uh, and visually if, if I can. Um, we have the PDC, Professional Development Center, which includes GED completion, job readiness training, and the vocational training. We have the um, the recovery portion of it, which includes the NAT, Nutritionally Assisted Treatment, uh, our 12-step, you know, we use some 12-step principles in there, uh, licensed nutritionist, and then we've also got um, the AOD, alcohol and other drug intensive outpatient. Okay, so those are those are geared toward the health of the individuals that are coming through some sort of recovery process, and then we've got our Eagles Nest Recovery House as well. So we like to think of those more as like a dorm or an area where people are going to stay as they're both recovering and entering vocational and completing vocational program. So the the other leg here is Grow Urban Farm, which is part of the Working Toward Your Future program. So Working Toward Your Future is the big heading. If you were to come into our program, uh, go to you have to start with our orientation. So you come in and you sit through uh, you know a short presentation about what we offer, and then we do a breakout session. Maybe you choose healthcare. Maybe you cho- choose advanced manufacturing with the welding or the machining, and you mm-hmm. answer some questions there. Then you complete two short professionalism classes that uh, address um, behavior in the workplace, uh, some things like getting your credentials in line on a resume, and um, just some professionalism stuff. So you, you check those off, and now you're going to go into some case uh, case management. You're going to schedule a case management session, and in that session, 
there's going to be an assessment. If you aren't currently working or you're just part-time employed and you would like to get some job readiness training or make a stipend um, to help support you while you're going through the vocational training, um, then we would see if working towards your future is a fit. And uh, Grow Urban Farm is part of that working towards your future program. So once uh, we find out, yeah, this is a fit, um, we have a $25 a day stipend available to you. Um, and that's not, it's, it's, it's really not about the money. I mean, you'll find out very quickly that um, that's going to help you basically attend, you know, get there. Um mm-hmm snack, lunch, bus pass, uh, fuel, whatever you need to, to, to make sure that you can stay engaged. And then, uh, mm-hmm. you know, meet with me briefly. We'll talk about a schedule. Currently, we're running Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So those are five-hour days, $25 stipend for each five-hour day worked. Um, get paid on two-week cycles. And um, it, it's about uh, accountability, and it's about communication, um, attitude, Aptitude, attendance, those are the three, attitude, aptitude, attendance. So we want to – it's a great time for anybody to focus in on their own attitude. It's not about necessarily, uh, you know, it's it's like changing. What we want to do is kind of change this attitude of I have to do this to I get to do this. So, yeah. Yes, uh, changing we, your perspective, we, changing your perspective. Change the perspective. We want to give those opportunities. So we do plant propagation um, by seed and um, – we uh, so we raise plants in our greenhouse, and uh, we cultivate. So we, we make sure that the soil is prepared correctly um, with the mm-hmm. right nutrients, and we uh, you know we do weed prevention. I don't like to spend my time in the garden weeding. Pulling weeds is not my idea of a good time. So we do a lot of management of the soil and the crops so that we avoid a lot of that. Um, we have irrigation practices uh, that we do. Harvesting, cleaning, packaging, uh, washing and packaging, and then we do marketing. And for some people, that's the best part. We have some individuals that really enjoy just getting out in the community, selling vegetables, and um, and so we. Are have you talking about marketing the actual vegetables? Marketing the vegetables for sale is that outside of the um, the market days that you guys have? Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Um, this year is a really exciting year. We're uh, joining, we're, we're partnering with uh, Action, which they're actually longtime partners of Flying High. Action is an organization, it's a consortium of 13 churches in the city, and we are joining with them. Um, they're going to help us with pop-up markets uh, in the downtown and, and surrounding uh, neighborhoods in town. So give you a quick idea of where we're going to be starting May 2nd, we'll be on the north side, uh, Mount Carmel, and we'll be there in the evening for actions. They have an event there on May 2nd. And then on, starting June 7th, every Friday, we'll be in a different location rotating throughout the city. So I'm going to give you a list of those so that you can uh, print, you can publish them on your site, make them available. But just to give you an idea, we'll be the downtown Federal Plaza every other week. And in between those weeks, we'll make our rotation through town. So, you know, we'll start, kick off June 7th downtown, Federal Plaza, out in front of Chase Bank, uh, weather permitting. If the weather's not good, we just move it inside. But we'll definitely be there. And then uh, we'll be on the south side on the 14th, Newport Library. Um, And then back to Federal Plaza on the 21st. The 28th, we'll be out at Arlington. Um, the mm-hmm. fifth is a is a is a holiday weekend. We won't be uh, operating that Friday, but back to it on the east side on the twelfth, Rockford Village. Then we'll be back to Federal Plaza, and then Grace Evangelical on the west side. So I'll I'll, I'll send you the list, but I just keep in mind that we're going to be rotating into neighborhoods where people live. The urban market, the market that you're talking about right now, you guys will be selling all of the the vegetables and things that you prepared, or excuse me, the grew. Yeah. Yeah, so we're growing uh we're growing all the vegetables to supply those markets, although we have formed a relationship with Aunt Julie's, which is a well-known family-ran um vegetable farm which will be supplementing some high volume. So we grow only some cabbage. Cabbage takes a lot of space to grow. And so Mm -hmm. we know that there's a high demand for cabbage. There's a high demand for a few other things. Um fruit, we don't grow fruit. 
but we uh, we partnered with another local farm, um, Hoffman's Orchards, for peaches mm-hmm. and apples and pears and plums. And, um, that sounds good. Yeah, man. So so we're working with some very local farms, so it's still super fresh and naturally grown. And uh, so we're excited to, to bring that volume to our market because we are a small farm. Mm-hmm. We operate on an acre and a half. So to be able to partner with these other uh, local growers is um, it's exciting, and it gives us a whole level of confidence whenever we're doing this outreach in the communities. And so that's an exciting part for our, our students. Um, you know, and, and if, if we could transition to talking quickly about Growing You Urban Ag Leadership Program. Oh, please. Um, yeah, I, you had mentioned this. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that, the Growing You. What is that, the leadership uh, program? So I think the idea is I just told you how our students and how clients of Flying High can engage in, in Grow Urban Farm, but mm-hmm. this Growing You Ag Leadership Program is really about anybody showing up on their off in their time between you know working and taking care of their families and and that kind of thing that want to engage and help on the farm, learn some things, and receive a discount. Um, so. You know, it's exciting that that Grow Urban Farm is at the stage where we've built a strong enough foundation that we can reach out and we can bring people from the community onto the farm for programming. Um, we've got we've got events and celebrations that we want to include people in. You know, mm-hmm. and so this Growing You Urban Ag Leadership Program is really how to do it. So I'm uh, I know that we'll post the flyer alongside this right. podcast, but I want to let people know that we have um, that opportunity. So if you were just to call, you know, me um, directly at three three zero two zero eight two five nine five, you can become a volunteer, receive a ten percent discount on your purchases through us, and um, be a part of the team. You know, and 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 learn a lot, learn a lot, and things that you can take home into in your own gardening efforts, and yeah. So it's it's not just for our students. We're opening up to the community. Well, as far as just the food that you're growing, uh, it's, you said you're a small farm. I'd heard that you were expanding a little bit. Is that still on the table? Yeah, yeah. So I know that you would take some interest uh, because you do some work in the area of real estate. Um, mm-hmm. So. Michigan State University came out and they were I just saw these guys with tablets and they were walking around the neighborhood and and they looked really excited and I'm I'm just like, "Hey, what are, what are you guys doing?" and they said, "You know, we're plotting the land use of of all this vacant land, all these, you know, properties out here." And um and they said, "What are you guys doing?" And I said, "Well, we're growing vegetables. This is an urban farm." And he said, "That's great. In previous studies, we've we've really ranked urban farming high." in uh, appropriate land use for uh, de-urbanized uh, areas or, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, areas with a lot of um, blighted properties blighted properties or delinquent landowners. And because with a very little input, very little um, capital, you can get – you can create jobs and some revenue from this ground, you know. So – it was it was really interesting to me interesting to me that they identified areas like north side of Youngstown and surrounding areas as um prime ground for for developing in agriculture and um so right across from the farm right across Bissell Avenue uh Kensington excuse me Kensington mm-hmm. Avenue we uh locate we it took a while <laughs> it took it took a year of really trying to run like find out who owned this ground and ultimately the land bank got involved and and they helped us um in 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 completing the purchase of five adjacent lots that, Ooh, that nice. homes had already been demolished and so we're going to we're we're looking into getting a fruit production small fruit uh, probably berries uh raspberries oh that's great like raspberry yeah, strawberries strawberries oh yeah strawberries and so we've got some work ahead of us hopefully this year the the it's finalized We've tested the soil. We're going to have to test for lead. There's a lot to do when it comes to urban farming to make sure everything's safe. But once we mm-hmm. do, then we'll um, take the, the route, the strategy necessary to make sure that we're um, we're growing the best the best quality, you know, that, uh, that anybody could, could desire. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of uh, fun, for one thing, and then just 
beauty of all that greenery, you know, in the city is going to be really cool to see. As we start to wind down, I remember last time I gave you a random question. This one's a little bit nicer, uh, but I think it's right up your alley. Uh, now, in your experience, in your experience, what's the easiest vegetable that people should be going in their yard to save money at the grocery store? Okay. Uh, man, Swiss chard is the champion. Unlikely hero of the garden, but Swiss chard. Do you, have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I haven't you uh, heard of chard? Much of it. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. No. Okay. So, um, if you like spinach, you I can do. come to like chard. Um, if you like greens, collard greens, kale, that kind of thing. I do. You know. I, I, I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But but Swiss chard is so easy, and it's beautiful. It's almost like ornamental. There's a variety called um, Bright Lights, Bright Lights, which is another great – it's just a great song, too, Bright Lights, Big City. But um, anyhow, it's bright yellow and red and orange and pinkish, and um, yeah. And so it's a leafy green, but it grows – It's I, I always said it's just the most prodigious plant out in the garden. There was one that had seeded itself, like volunteer seed fell, and, and then it sprouted. I said, oh, hey, look, there's a little Swiss chard. We let it grow, and it turned into, like, the the farm mascot, like a pet. It was huge. It was like a baby dinosaur. It was huge. And wow. we would just trim the bottom leaves and let the top ones unfurl. You know, the the new growth comes out of the very top of it, and you just keep taking the bottom leaves off out of it, and off of it, and it just keeps growing. And from from now, I mean, let's say mid April to the end of November, it's still popping out growth um, from the same plant, the same single plant. And you just chop it and throw it in your sautés, throw it in soup. Um, it's got a, it adds a nice liquor or broth, you know what I mean, to your soups and your, your, mm-hmm. your, uh, your, your sautés or whatever. It's a superfood. You give me something I mean, to think about. Dude, iron, minerals, vitamins, it's a superfood by any measure. And, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it, man. I like to preach on some Swiss chard. That's, that's the one. <laughs> so that's one of those things. I, like, I went to culinary school for a bit and, um, and so, and I also love going to, you know, nice restaurants that's one of my things like you go to my for my birthday i don't need presents just take me someplace nice to eat yes and so i've seen i've eaten it but it's one of those things where you don't see it at the uh grocery store very often Mm -hmm. and most people don't you know if you're not brought up on it you just bypass the stuff that you're not familiar with uh it's just these days you you can you know google and say okay what is this and uh, how do i use this but not everybody does that so i thank you I'm going to be uh, seeing if I have any Swiss chard seeds over here at the Walmart. Very simple to grow. Very simple to grow. Mm-hmm. Grab some seeds and have at it. Do a border of in your in your front yard. It's beautiful. It's it's bright and it's almost like an ornamental. And everybody will be stopping. What is that? Hey, try it. You know, eat it. You're not going to want to eat it raw though. You're going to want to chop it and cook it a little bit raw. It's got a little bit of a a bittery kind of after flavor thing that it's just not, you know, but as soon as you put some heat to it, steam it, wilt it, it gets super smooth and rich flavor. And I'm telling you, the, what the world needs now is, is more chard. <laughs> well, I think I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cap us off with that one. That's a good uh, ending right. line. <laughs> what the world needs now is a little Swiss chard. I, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, well, thank you again, Parker, for, for speaking with me today. I, I really enjoyed our conversation. I hope some people learned a few things from yeah. our conversation. And um, I look forward to talking with you again and seeing you on one of these uh these outings when I come out to uh, Youngstown, I definitely want to drop by and Indeed. check out your, your farm. Mm-hmm. That's you or anybody listening. Stop at the farm, 77, 77 Bissell Avenue. That's Youngstown, Ohio, 44505. Uh, best time to catch me is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 2. You'll see me and the crew out there um, working. I mean, this is the moment you get there, you're learning. You're taking in something, some new process on um you know growing the 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 best vegetables that anybody could desire and it's just um it's beautiful out there and once we get our flowers going we have pollinators butterflies um it's all good oh, I love that so you are welcome anybody listening is welcome uh to stop out and um and see what it's what's going on 
Well, it sounds like a very appealing invitation. Thank you, sir. All right. Man. And thanks for uh, joining me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You have a, have a great one.